Hello there, ladies and gents. My name is Scott, and welcome back to Fudge Muppet, the home of the very best role-playing builds on YouTube. Today, I'm unbelievably excited to bring you one of our most unique builds in terms of appearance and playstyle. This is the Druid. The Druid is in sync with the whole world around him, and he combines a spiritual connection with the wild and a mastery of strange weapons to make his mystical mark on the wasteland. The Druid believes his soul is in tune with Mother Nature, and he has an unbreakable bond with many animals that he takes under his wing. The Druid commands the creatures of the Commonwealth to do his bidding while he lays down cover fire in the form of neon blasts from his laser musket and gorse rifle. His implementation of stealth tactics mean he and his wild hordes are always on the prowl and are ready to strike with lethal predatory precision. Decision. If you're looking for a build that capitalizes on the harsh and deadly inhabitants of the post-war world, then this one is for you. As always, timestamps to each section of the video can be found in the description, but for now, let's get right into the backstory. The Druid was born an only child in a small rural town outside of Boston. From a young age, he was quite eccentric. He was by no means timid, but spoke sparingly, usually preferring to keep his thoughts close to his chest. On his fifth birthday, his parents decided to gift him a Labrador puppy. The goal was to instill a sense of responsibility in him from a young age. His mother had warned that the druid's fleeting, immature mind would wander and liability to raise the dog would fall on them within a matter of weeks. But his father had insisted and the druid had delivered. He named the pup Sam and treated him like a sibling. The druid had reveled in the joy of companionship with the animal. He didn't need to socialize the way that humans do. There was something far more instinctual and implicit about interspecies friendships that resonated within him. He developed a love for animals that couldn't be replicated by the people in his life, and the affinity blossomed as he grew up. He would walk his dog through the forest surrounding his hometown and often stumbled upon wounded animals. He felt obliged to help them, and despite his mother's disdain, would bring them home, nursing them back to health in the shed at the end of the yard. The paternal values his parents had encouraged had become the druid's purpose. He formed filial bonds with each animal he tended to, and after such intimate exposure, he had begun to wonder whether, by some divine intervention, he could communicate with them. During his high school years, the druid's persistence and enthusiasm landed him a job at the local zoo. Unsurprisingly, he excelled in all areas of the job and formed connections with all of the animals. Though it wasn't recommended to get too close to them, he would sometimes play with the gorillas. He would exchange crude noises and laughter with the monkeys, but his favorite were the American black bears. He was fortunate enough to assist in delivering the offspring of a pregnant black bear sow. The druid had learned that the cubs were at their most vulnerable for the first 30 to 40 days of their lives. As prior to that they are unable to open their eyes. He was tasked to oversee the growth of these frail cubs along with a girl named Nora. He discovered that she was an animal rights activist with ambitions to study and practice animal law. While the druid generally avoided the company of other people, he revered Nora for her beliefs. A relationship soon flourished between the two. Several weeks later, the druid discovered that one of the black bear cubs was going to be euthanized due to overrepresentation of the cubs' genes in the enclosure. The druid was unable to remain professional. He was distraught and was willing to do anything to protect the cub. During his next closing shift, as he did the rounds shutting off lights and locking fences, the druid made his way to the black bear enclosure. He glanced over each shoulder to ensure no one was around and noted the back and forth movement of the security camera. When the camera pans past the enclosure, the druid leapt into the bear pit, taking cover in the shadows cast by the formation of large rocks. He made his way over to where the sow and her cubs lay sleeping and gently picked up the vulnerable cub, cradling him in the crook of his arm. The druid carefully maneuvered his way through the winding graveled paths, retreating to dark alcoves when the security cameras turned his way. After leaving the zoo undetected, the druid took the cub into the shed to look after him until he was capable of fending for himself. The mysterious vanishing of the cub spurred hysteria in the zoo, and out of fear of repercussions, the druid knew he could not keep accommodating the fugitive animal. The next day, the druid took the cub deep into the forest, knowing perfectly well that it would be a miracle for him to survive without protection and its mother's milk. He shared an embrace with the fragile creature before watching it scamper hesitantly into the wilderness. Despite a lack of incriminating evidence, the druid lost his job in the aftermath of the disappearance. Looking for a change in environment, he decided to join the military. During his service, he fostered a reputation for his unique approach to combat and his ability to adapt and survive. His time spent around creatures heightened his instincts, and even when put repeatedly in the face of danger, the druid would always return unscathed. Watching the way monkeys had used intuitive thinking to craft makeshift tools had inspired him to make obscure alterations to his weapons. In the same way primates fashioned tools from sticks and branches, the druid would forge ergonomic handles and barrels for his guns. 
sons. When he returned home, he reunited with Nora and they settled down to raise a family in Sanctuary Hills. Despite the chaos and destruction that has fallen upon post-war Boston and its civilization, the Druid's primary concern lies within the wildlife. He's an outdoorsman who doesn't need many luxuries early on. He won't be too focused on re-establishing human connections as he always found companionship predominantly in animals. He will study the wild creatures of the wasteland, discovering their behaviors and personality traits before determining how he can befriend and utilize them for mutually assured survival. Throughout his travels, when he encounters Yagua, he will often ponder on the fate of the bear cub he released. Had he lived through the atomic annihilation? And if so, had he malformed into one of these blemished abominations? When the time comes for the Druid to pledge his allegiance to a main story faction, he will be most drawn to the cause of the Minutemen. The Minutemen's belief have a strong emphasis on establishing sustainable settlements across the wasteland, and their mentality of looking out for their own resonates with him. The Druid will have a profound respect for these qualities, as it is the kind of attitude which guarantees a species' ability to survive and thrive. Their focus on maintainable agriculture may prove to be crucial for the ensured survival of all the Commonwealth's inhabitants. The Raiders of Nuka World will disgust the Druid, even though the pack seem to enforce a system system of meritocracy the druid respects. The overall malevolent ambitions of the raiders is enough to turn that respect into resentment. The notion of survival the fittest raiders seem to uphold warrants admiration, but the neglectful and gratuitous carnage they leave in their wake is problematic. Thus, he will take no great pain cleansing the park of human life, allowing him to shift his focus to the abundance of unique and fascinating fauna present in Nuka World. The mystical druid seems to have the primal nature tailor-made for prominence in the post-apocalyptic wasteland. But now let's have a look at how this impacts the start game's special stats. When you leave the vault, his base stats will be 2 strength, 1 perception, 9 endurance, none charisma, five intelligence, one agility, and one luck. The special book will go into endurance in order to open the door to solar powered as early as possible so that the druid can bask in the nourishment of precious UV rays for the first time in 200 years. If the druid's stint in the military isn't proof enough, you need only to look at his youth to see why he has such impressive enduring capabilities. The druid lived vicariously through the many animals he befriended, and as a result became an expert on the wilderness. While his peers lounged on cushioned sofas watching television vision reruns, the druid was with his dog deep in the woods. Much like endurance, the druid excels in his charisma, but it's not the traditional brand of charisma. The druid has an instinctual link to all living beings, something that isn't necessarily expressed in the literal way humans tend to communicate. His understanding of motivations of the life around him allows him to align and even manipulate other creatures to carry out his will. His next strongest asset is his intelligence. He is no academic whiz by any means, but his unconventional nature and broad range of life experiences have have had a positive effect on him. He learned how to treat the wounded animals at a very young age, driven only by a desire to nurture. He has also learned how to apply his unique intellect to modify and enhance weapons and armor. Five Intelligence will ensure that you never feel intellectually underwhelming in your travels with the Druid. Now that we know what stats we're dealing with, let's get into the Druid's essential perks. First up from the Strength stat line, we have Armorer. While the Druid isn't known for his strength, he is a skilled craftsman specializing in unorthodox modifications. In a world where the vast majority of viable resources have been blown from the face of the Earth, being able to think laterally is a handy skill. With the first rank of the Armorer perk, the Druid will have access to rank 1 armor mods, which should be all you need to optimize the final build. Build. From Perception, we have the Rifleman perk. Similar to Strength, Perception isn't the Druid's best stat, but thanks to his time in the military, the Druid is proficient with non-automatic rifles. With this perk maxed, attacks with non-auto rifles do double damage, ignoring 30% of a target's armor. There will also be an 8% chance of crippling an opponent's limb. Next up is Endurance. The first useful perk from this stat line is Aquaboy. As a survivalist and an operator who uses stealth tactics to his advantage, this perk is very beneficial to the Druid playstyle. Taking the first of the two ranks will allow you to breathe underwater and no longer take radiation damage from swimming. Also from Endurance comes one of the Druid's key perks. Solar Power will make sustainability significantly easier. Taking all levels of this perk will grant the Druid two strength and two endurance between the hours of 6am and 6pm, and on top of this, sunlight will slowly heal radiation damage and sunlight will slowly slowly regenerate lost health. The bulk of the Druid's gameplay will come from his charisma. He is one with nature and he is in tune spiritually with the creatures of the Commonwealth, regardless of the horrific abnormalities on set by the deadly profusion of toxic radiation. Before we get into the wildlife manipulation perks though, we can't neglect the importance of the Cap Collector perk. This perk works in tandem with his choice to side with the settlement-centric Minutemen. Fully optimized, the Druid will not only get much better buying and selling prices at vendors, but he will also be able to invest a total of 500 caps to raise a 
a store's buying capacity. After Cap Collector comes Lone Wanderer. As you can probably tell, the Druid opts to work alongside animals rather than people, so the Lone Wanderer perk is perfect for this loner. Once all ranks are completed, you take 30% less damage and deal 25% more damage when traveling without a companion. You'll also get an increased carrier weight of 100 pounds and 25 extra action points to spend. With dog meat by your side, this is a great all-round perk choice. On the topic of dog meat, there's the attack dog perk. Seeing as traveling with dog meat does not detriment the lone wanderer perk bonuses, this perk goes hand in hand with it. Your faithful canine companion will sometimes grab hold of an enemy, making it easier to hit in bats. There is also the possibility that in this process, he will cripple a limb or cause bleeding. Additionally, with the Inuka World DLC, the fourth and final rank will enable you to take 10% less damage when adventuring with dog meat. Animal Friend is next on the list, and this is one area where our animal-loving druid needs no justification. Fully optimizing this perk and the Wasteland Whisperer perk means the druid will have the ability to pacify, incite, and command all the Commonwealth animals and creatures. Finally, from the Charisma stat line, we've got Local Leader. Similar to Cap Collector, this perk benefits from taking good care of settlements you build with the Minutemen. Dropping two perk points here will permit you to build workstations and stores at settlements and even establish supply lines between them. As we touched on briefly in the start game stats, the druid has a few areas of expertise and intelligence. Firstly, he is an efficient and meticulous surgeon when someone or something is in dire straits. Taking the first three levels of medic will increase the potency of Stimpax and Radaways by 80%. Also from intelligence is Gunnut. We know the druid was notorious for his peculiar weapon variations, so with the Gunnut perk fully undertaken, he'll have access to plenty of mods. In a similar vein, three levels of science will also expand his crafting capability. A diverse and unique arsenal is one area where this build really sets itself apart from the rest. While the Druid will start the game off a little lethargic and stiff, this will change as he adapts to his new environment. So firstly, you'll want to drop two perk points into the base stat, bringing it up to a four once combined with the bobblehead. From there, we suggest investing in Sneak. The Druid's past proves he's quite capable of covert ops when he's fighting for a cause he believes in, and with all levels of the perk taken, the Druid will be 50% harder to detect while sneaking. Also, he will no longer trigger floor-based traps and Minds, running will no longer adversely affect stealth, and engaging in stealth will throw distant enemies off his scent. Along with Sneak, there's Mr. Sandman. This sinister perk rewards those ruthless enough to strike when it's least anticipated, and as a man who can weave his way silently through the shadows, the druid knows how to get the job done quickly. This perk allows you to instantly kill sleeping enemies, but more importantly, it adds 50% sneak attack damage to silenced weapons. Not including gear, but including all bobbleheads, the druid's special stats will be 3 strength, 2 perception, 11 endurance, 10 charisma, 6 intelligence, 4 agility, and 2 luck. The druid is the self-proclaimed son of Mother Earth, and he has the aesthetic to support his claims. Early game, there aren't really any apparel-based restrictions. As a survivalist, he will wear whatever suits the weather and whatever keeps him alive. But the goal is to get a full set of heavy-treated leather over whatever underwear gives you the best situational bonuses. Once you make it to Nuka World, the pack of deer mask will be the iconic headwear associated with the druid. Until you get there, though, the green hood makes for an adequate placeholder. As for his arsenal, the druid delivers on his out-of-the-ordinary reputation. During the early game, any natural low-tech, low-maintenance hunting rifle will suffice, but ideally the build will use a laser musket with a wooden handle and gyro-compensating lens. This not only makes for a fun weapon choice, but it also nails the whimsical, magical feel of the druid. Along with this, we recommend a fully upgraded gorse rifle, which can also feel like a magical staff shooting bolts of magic. The Druid will make the most of the Lone Wanderer attack dog combo by taking dog meat as his companion of choice. It's not only an effective approach, but it offers the Druid a chance to reminisce about his pre-war lifelong canine best friend. The Druid will assist the Minutemen in their efforts to raise and maintain settlements across the Commonwealth, but his passion will lead him to build a zoo on Spectacle Island, showcasing the many weird and wonderful post-war species. Like many great men throughout history, he is adamant that no matter how bad the state of the world may be, someone should be preserving and documenting for future generations. Using shopkeepers and supply lines, he'll be able to run an epic zoo complete with harmless pacified deathclaws. For any more insight onto how this is done, check out our Deathclaw Island video, which will be linked in the description. And that concludes yet another Fudge Muppet Fallout 4 build. If you liked the video, we'd greatly appreciate your support in the form of a like and a share. And don't forget, links to corresponding videos, timestamps, and social media can all be found just down below in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. I've been Scott, and I will see you later.